G'day everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to start preparing, or well not start preparing, finalise preparations for uh, the 2022 Australian National Veteran Vehicle Rally, which is being held down in Bustleton. Um, two things for you to notice. One is that I have grown my uh, moustache. Uh, I'm going to go cosplay and hopefully that will make me look a bit like an old timer from the 19, early 1900s. Uh, the other thing in the background, which I'll swivel the camera for, is uh, I have a West Australian license plate now, which is, um, which is a fantastic ending, which means that the vehicle's been inspected and inspection. There was a, a minor fault which was discovered, which I need to repair. Um, it's to do with the spindle that goes through the, um, the front axle. Uh, the, um, the holes the spindle passes through, kingpin if you like, uh, a little bit flogged out. So um, I just need to do some repair there, but I'm good to go. Uh, so what I've got to do today is uh, only, a, only a couple of small jobs. I, um, I do want to repack the front wheel bearings and I want to drain the, uh, uh, the diff oil and replace that. And one other job, which I'll quickly show you is I need to mount the front license plate. So I've sort of started here already. I did order a piece of leather um, off eBay, but it hasn't arrived yet. So I've taken this old belt and I've, um, I've sliced that in two. It's gonna effectively have two straps and the two straps are gonna go um, around the front axle. Um, you know, jury's out on um, the mounting points for 1914. I've seen some photos on the internet that, that um, have it suspended here with a leather strap um, on either side. Uh, there was some debate that, um, that those were uh, dealer plates. Uh, and the one. Anyway, I'll do something that looks a little bit period. I haven't got much option at this stage, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, the other thing you might notice is um, quite a lot more detailed. So I have been detailing it. Um, I gave it a bit of uh, extra cut polish and um, it's, it's looking really good. Uh, the roof's looking really nice as well, so that that will be part of the final preps as well. Um, so I haven't drained a Model T diff before, so I'm going to do that, and I'll put that on camera. And um, I, I won't bother with uh, wheel bearings; they're pretty straightforward. So we're going to do that. Um, you can't you can't get the fluid out unless you pump it out somehow. So what I did is I bought a little 12 volt pump, and I'm going to just try that and see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I'll set you up and we'll get that done. Okay, so cutting to the setup I've got going on here. Uh, I've got a bowl. Um, hopefully it'll hold uh, all of that oil that's in there. This is the pump. It's a little 12 volt pump, uh, specifically designed for pumping oil. And I've got that connected up to transformer here it's, uh, to give us the 12 volts. Um, the kit came with some rubber hose, as you'd expect. Um, I'll work out which combination to use. I like the stiff hose, that's going to be good to be getting down to the bottom. So, um, all we need to do now is set that up. I'll set you guys back up again. So we've got, um, got an inlet and an outlet, obviously. It just says direction of flow that way. So uh, on this one, I think I'll be able to put that on. And on this one, we'll put our our drain hose on. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, I'll come right back. Now it's getting warm here in Perth. The weather's now ideal to get out and about. The rain showers are a few and far between. Uh, you'll see some, some new content coming. Um, this, uh, this series that I'm recording now as we speak is going to be more about the journey and uh, the activities of the upcoming rally than the mechanical side of things. I think mechanical can get a little bit dry. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be the, the real focus. And uh, I'll get the Triumph back out again and uh, get, some, get some miles under the belt there. Okay, so I don't know how this pump will prime. <clears throat> it's priming from virtually, um, uh, well, it is completely dry, being brand new. 
So we'll just see what we can get started here. And turn this thing on. And I'll swing it up to 12 volts. Oh, sure. Here we go. As you can see it's coming down. She's pretty slow. Should have warmed it up first. Yeah, I don't know why it stopped moving. Maybe I blocked it somehow. if I can help it along. This is <laughs> just sucking on that pipe or something. Whoa. Oh, that sort of got a bit of a trip out here. Not sure whether my power supply tripped or the pump tripped. Don't have any. I'm showing volts on the uh, showing volts on the transformer. But I'm not showing anything on here. There's no. Ah, it just clicked. I think that's just it tripping back again. Let's see. Probably just got hot.
I'm getting more out by jiggling this in and out of the hole. Man, this is useless. There's no suction there at all. I'm going to need to um, find an alternative way. Let me just put you back up. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, yeah. It cleared something. I guess you try things once or twice. It doesn't have the grunt or the suction. Having said that, it's finally found a little bit of grunt somewhere. Riveting viewing. I got gear all over the freaking tripod now. Anyway. Still moving. Oh, we cut out again. It's all good. I might go and get a rag. I'm feeling pretty uh, <laughs> like I've created more of a mess than anything else. Well, I'm going to keep going here and uh, I'll bring you guys back when I've drained that diff. Wish me luck, eh? This will be a few hours in the making. Okay, I'm bringing you in at the end of the process. Um, what I'm using here is, oh, that little electric pump was no good. So I'm using a um, compressed air powered fluid extractor slash brake bleeder and um, I've got, I uh, don't know if you can see there, probably about that much of the jug's full and we're just sucking air at the bottom here. So, um, Alright, well that was, that was fairly arduous from the perspective that I had to keep um, letting the air compressor cool down. I didn't want to overheat it by just continuous duty, no good for it. So. That took about, what's the time now? It took about 40 minutes in total. Um, let me just show you what came out of it. Now what I ended up doing was to thin, uh, to thin the fluid a little bit, I just um, I poured some petrol in there, about a quarter of a cup, and um, gave it a swill around, and that gave it just enough thinning to, uh, to come out a lot easier. The added benefit is that I can more easily see the contamination level of the oil. You're not going to be able to see this very well, but it kicks up as I do that. I rub my finger on the bottom. It does kick up very, very fine brass particles. So, um, given that I didn't have the axle apart, that's, um, that's a reasonably good sign as well. Um, it means the, um, the Babbitt thrust washers are gone, being replaced by brass, which is a bonus. Um, well, at least that's the forensics on that, from my perspective. Uh, I'm going to fill this back up again. I need a suitable uh, funnel for that hole in the diff, that one. And, uh, and then I'll work out how much to pour in there. I don't want to overfill it, uh, as per previous videos. This level about here is um, is right for that. You don't want at, at the level at the bottom of the holes, otherwise it um, it uh, can put additional um, leak leakability into the equation. So um, I'll pop you down and come back when we've got the setup to pour. All right, so I've got um, I've got this 
it doesn't need to have threads on it, but it, um, it's going to be useful to, uh, to plumb the depths, give me a, a level. So that's what I'm going to use there. Um, I'm using Penrite 140 gear oil. There's all sorts of debate on the forums around what is best and what's not. Um, this is just a pure mineral oil. Um, and it has, fortunately, has something with which I can pour. So I'm going to get that in there. And we'll um, see how we go. Yeah, it's pretty hard to know without doing a lot of guess and check. Um, I read one to one and a quarter pints. Is the right amount? Okay, I might have, um, might have put in 500 mils just then, so they must be getting reasonably close. I'm just going to get a little bit more. And then um, see if we've got a level on this. That's a no. I'll just give it a quick wipe there. Definitely not. More to go. Yeah, the, in the uh, early uh, early models, they packed the um, packed the diff with grease. I think they did realise though that um, in doing so. Pinion, sorry, the crown wheel, or end pinion for that matter, would um, literally clear a path for themselves through the grease and then would stop getting lubricated at that point. If you can imagine what would happen there, they, they can't throw the grease around. Um, it literally just, it just uh, cuts a track through the grease and, and there's no grease to um, come in behind it under pressure or anything to replace it so it just sort of sits there can't be good for lubrication and I suppose the issue with that is uh, when you start using um, using thinner gear oils the uh, the sealing system wasn't really designed to run oil so there's um, there's felt seals in the axle tubes if I'm not mistaken, uh, there's one at this end and one at the other end. No, two. There's one here and there's one at the outer, and um, there to stop the brakes, obviously from being off brakes. I, I jest, surely. Um, there to stop the um, the brakes from getting contaminated with grease. So yeah, we'll just keep going here. So, um, so the few things remaining, as I mentioned, front wheel bearings, repacking. Uh, the type of trip I'm going to make is a camping style. Um, I didn't want to pay you know, hundreds of dollars for the week in um, in hotel bills. Uh, nor did I want to pay, uh, the, the cheapest I could get a tr car trailer for was $480 for the week. They don't do one ways, so I'm hiring it for the week if I'm doing that. And um, and then I thought, you know what, I've put a lot of work into this car over the past year. And um, damn it, I want to drive it. I put a lot of work into, um, we might actually be having a result here on this, I'll just see put a lot of work into getting it registered and, and able to be driven on the roads. You know, I joined the club and went through all of that. Why would I trailer it? It is a, it is a bit of a distance there. I'm not, not saying I'm not apprehensive. I am apprehensive. It's, um, it's 260 kilometers, um, 260 Ks, uh, which, um, you yeah, know, that's a fair, it's a fair, oh, here we go. Yeah, I think we might have a result. Yeah, 260 is a, is a fair haul. Um, yeah, there we go. She's down to 
there, which is just where I want it. Fantastic. And what did it use? According to this, we used... That's so hard to read, eh? Uh, I think I did. Yeah, roughly... It's got 1.75 left out of 2.5. Used about 8... So how's my maths going? Um, yeah, seven, 750 mils. It feels a bit like one and a quarter pints. Someone else can do the math on that. Uh, yeah, so wh where was I? Yeah, so it's, um, it will be its maiden voyage, other than um, being taken around the block a number of times. Uh, and it did a road test with the inspector from the club. So um, that was somewhat, I don't want to round this off, somewhat of a prove out. Uh, however, 260 kilometers odd. It's a little bit different if you, if you get my drift. Right, so um, that's all happening on Sunday. Today is Friday. Those of you who have seen my uh, Triumph videos I uh, will appreciate the uh, the type of camping gear I take. I'm gonna uh, take the $14 tent again and uh, this the small cooler etc. What I've got to contend with is this. This is all I've got for cargo. Other than the floor I suppose, passenger side floor, but um, yeah the trunk isn't particularly massive. Um, I'll be going through that and taking some of those things out. We've got to I'll leave a fire extinguisher there. Um, Ford manual, there's my dipstick for the fuel and some paper towel. Um, there's a whole thing full of spark plugs and a cloth, I'll move that and I won't take the, um, I won't take that pump. I will however take um, an air compressor because uh, a 12 volt air compressor and some tire puncture repair just in case. Uh, now, so where are we here? I'll, I will cover off in more detail exactly what, um, what I'm going to be taking. If, uh, so we'll just pull that back in terms of zoom. I'm going to take a look at this now. Move this jack out of the way. Okay, so um, I'll take these gloves off, they might be a bit dirty. Alright, so I um, kind of measuring that and working out how I want them to hang I sort of want them just to hang like that I think maybe let me bring it up to something more like that I think that will be the go I'm doing I'm just doing that measurement there I've arrived at arrived at the right length so it's going to be that um, up here I, uh, I blued up some uh, some more bolts got some brass washers and uh, brass nuts and washers on there so that's um, that's going to become something like that and uh, a bolt through here through the plate and that'll look I think that'll look pretty decent for what it is. Uh, the, the, the key thing is I want the plates to be easily removable for the static displays. I don't want these WA plates on there. I want to put the New York plates back on it. Um, I'll give you a quick look at those actually. What I did with the, uh, the New York plates is they were very, very, um, they were very prone, I suppose, to, um, to rusting. A lot of the brown paint had come off and was replaced with sort of this rusty finish in the corner here. Um, and the white, the white paint was in fear of flaking off. So I just gave them a satin clear coat just to protect them. It's probably not the done thing to do with, with that, um, to ruin the patina on them. But I think I'd sooner, sooner have that, um, which is not going to, um, not going to further degrade 
uh, than really care about the patina. So, yeah, so static displays, these are going to go on. And, um, and for the road, uh, I, have to, I have to wear the, the West Australian plates. I can't, I can't do anything else. I can't put both plates on either. That's illegal. I'm hopping from thing to thing. Apologies for that, but um, I haven't really scripted this video. Um, another thing you may have noticed is these, these lights on here. Now, um, now what I did was I got, um, I got bicycle. Let's see if I can do that one-handed. Yep. So these are a, a bicycle, just a, a very cheap, eleven dollars each, bicycle um, LEDs. Um, they're not rechargeable. They're just triple A's, and um, uh, on the journey they'll be just solid. I'm not allowed to have them flashing, so they'll just be a, a solid red, and. Um, in my opinion, that's more effective than just having reflectors. The, um, so there's two of those, one on each side. I've got some batteries that I'll pack as well. And, uh, and that will be that. Back to this. Now, um, it's probably not the most interesting job. So um, I'll bring you back when I've, when I've finished that and, and show you what it looks like. Okay, here's the finished result. Um, that's... Uh, Looks reasonably in keeping, I suppose. It's better than zip ties. Um, considerations here, I did consider putting it here, but that would be, the crank handle would obstruct it and I might get a ticket for that. Um, even though this is gonna probably blow back a little bit as I go along at highway speeds, in uh, inverted commas. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what it is. Uh, I'm gonna move on now to wheel bearings and get those smashed out. Uh, and then that will be the, uh, the mechanical and kind of cosmetic stuff done. Oh, just one thing. I do need to do up a uh, specific um, uh, a little, little label here. It goes under the plate. It has to say um, either historical or veteran. Um, I made one up for this car. This one had to have a label restricted use. As you can see there, um, that one. What I did was I just printed it. It's got to be an inch. The lettering has to be an inch tall. I printed it out and then just ran um, through a laminator a couple of times. Made a lamp, you know, fairly. It's a fairly stiff kind of plastic there now. And that's just uh, duct taped to the back, which is what I'll do to here. It doesn't have to be pretty. Uh, and uh, yeah, and when I do a static display, the whole thing will come off anyway. And you know you can see I did the same arrangement here. Nice brass nuts, um, blued. Oh, they need to be lined up horizontally. I haven't tightened it yet. Yeah. Okay. On to wheel bearings. But thought I'd share that with you. Okay. I'm bringing you in for a whinge. <laughs> and, uh, it's been characteristic of this channel for a little while, but I apologise for that. Um, this is why I'm uh, repacking the bearings. So this I've not even come at this with any sort of a cloth or a rag or anything but as you can see they are dry just dry as um, there's inside the the bearing race and hub yeah it needs definitely needs repacking I'm glad I've done this um, so yeah, I'll take those off and, uh, and get that done whether the uh, outer the outer bearings no better I'll just pull that out there see as you can see uh, yeah needs um it's much more grease than that, fellas. Let me get the grease out and work my way through that. Okay, that's, uh, that's the front bearings greased. And uh, that's the last, last job for today. I've made a bloody massive mess here. Um, I did a bit of polishing of the brass after I finished that bearing. Got a bit distracted. <coughs> it's looking good though. Uh, no, we near as perfect as I've seen. I'm certainly not in any competition for uh, highly polished brass as uh, I think the moment it gets any water on it, any rain on it, and there's likely to get some tomorrow. Um, yeah, it'll just be a bit of a waste of time. But I'll do a decent walk around before I set off. Um, the, the second part of this video is, uh, is really the pack up, um, seeing what I can take on board. Uh, for the trip. So while I was at it, I polished up the um, I polished these up and I polished up my little valve stem covers 
I did clean up the, uh, the doctor's case as well. I'm going to carry some tools in there. It, uh, it's got a stethoscope and a bloody um, sphagmanomanometer to check blood pressure. So anyway, that's, um, that's it. I'm going to get sorted tidying in this place up. Um, got a pile of rags over there that I need to, to wash. Um, but I'll get cracking on tidying up and then um, part two. Well, hello again. Um, sitting here editing uh, today's video and uh, realized that there's a natural break point. Um, finished all the mechanical work now and uh, all that's left is really packing up and, um, and heading down south. So what I, what I plan to do in the next episode is, um, is cover off on you know, what I've taken, what I've packed and, uh, and some of the journey um, to keep it somewhat separate logically from what I've been doing. So uh, this is the outro now for, um, for today's video um, and we'll see you at the next episode. Thanks for watching.